The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. <laughs> This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. I should like to introduce a representative of our sponsor, the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Tonight, our equitable representative has a very timely message for fathers and mothers. I'm a father myself, three boys and one girl. I suppose that most of you parents are pretty much like my wife and me around Christmas time. You realize that your children are the most wonderful thing that ever happened to you. And that's why you mothers and fathers will be especially interested when Mr. Keating tells you about the Equitable Society's fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. Yes, the more you love those kids, the more carefully you will listen in about 14 minutes to this important message from the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Tonight's FBI file, The Return of St. Nick. The United States is a young country in the family of nations, but already it has its share of national holidays, holidays that belong to these 48 states. Those holidays are spaced from February to November, and of every one of those days, it can be said that they belong to the people of the United States exclusively. But there is one legal holiday observed in this country that does not belong to us exclusively, any more than it belongs to any nation. It, too, celebrates a birthday. A birthday which has come to mean much in the hearts of millions of people. A birthday we call Christmas. Tonight's program, based on the holiday theme, has, by your many requests, become almost a tradition in our series. It opens in an FBI field office located in a large eastern city. It is two days before Christmas, and Special Agent Jim Taylor has just entered the office of Agent in Charge Sheridan. Morning, Jim. Good morning, sir. I've got my report here on the Henderson case. Oh, fine. Just leave it on the desk. All right. Uh, you're officially on leave, aren't you, Jim? Yes, sir, as of this morning, but I wanted to hand this in before I left. You going out of town for the holidays? Yes, sir. I'm flying home this afternoon. Oh, fine. How long since you've been home on Christmas? Three years. <laughs> well, have a nice trip, Jim. Thank you, sir. And a very Merry Christmas. And the same to you, sir. Mister? Yes, what is it, son? Where's the FBI? Right down there at the end of the hall. Thank you. Oh, uh, wait a minute, son. What do you want with the FBI? We've got some trouble, and I thought they could help us. Well, I'm a special agent. You think I could help? Are you a G-man? That's right. What kind of trouble have you got? Santa Claus is missing. Oh, well, now that is trouble. His name's Mr. Norton. We've got to find him. We've looked all over. Who looked all over? All of us older fellas at the settlement house. We went every place. All of you older fellas, huh? How old are you, sir? I'll be ten next month. Oh, I see. Can you help us, mister? Well, I don't know, but I'll tell you what we'll do first. Let's go downstairs and get an ice cream soda and you tell me the whole story. This is the settlement house, Mr. Taylor. Mm -hmm. It's a nice looking building. Here, we go in this door. All right. Go ahead, son. Thanks. Mr. Williams' office is in here. He's a nice man. I'm sure he is. Store here? Yeah, but first we got a knock. Oh, I didn't know that. Come in. Hello, Mr. Williams. Oh, hello, Eddie. This is Mr. Taylor. How do you do, Mr. Taylor? Glad to meet you, sir. Mr. Taylor's a G-man. He is? Yeah. 
I got him to help us find Mr. Norton. I see. I got to run now. Choir practice starts in ten minutes. All right, Eddie, you go ahead. I'll explain everything to Mr. Taylor. I'll see you later, Eddie. Yes, sir. I'm sorry you were bothered by Eddie, Mr. Taylor. Oh, it's no bother at all, Mr. Williams. Eddie made me feel genuinely concerned. I'm sure he did. We're all very concerned about Mr. Norton. If there's anything at all I can do, unofficially, of course, I'd be very happy to. That's very nice of you. What happened to Mr. Norton? Uh, who is he? Well, Pop Norton has worked here at the settlement house longer than anyone can remember. I've been here 15 years, and he was here when I came. Oh, I see. How old would you say he is? Well, I guess around 60 or 65. Mm. And his job? Well, nothing in particular. He did odd jobs around the house and returned for his room and board and a few dollars a month. The biggest job he had was being Santa Claus every year at the Christmas party. Every child in the house was crazy about him, and he loved every one of them in return. And he said he was missing. Is that true? Yes. I have no idea where he could have gone. Well, what made him leave? That's the odd part of it. No one seems to know. Yesterday, he sent one of the boys in with a note to me saying he was leaving immediately. I see. I went to his room, and he was gone. I'm afraid it's not going to be much of a Christmas for the children without Pop. Mr. Williams, do you mind if I take a look around his room? Not at all. Maybe I can find something there that will lead us to where Santa Claus is hiding. God rest ye merry gentlemen Let nothing you dismay Remember Christ William. our Savior Mr. Williams, may I see you for a moment? What? Oh, oh, certainly. Keep singing, boys. Let's walk over here. Did you find anything in Mr. Norton's room, Mr. Taylor? No, not a thing. The room was cleaned out. Tell me, what do you know about Mr. Norton? What did he do on his day off? Who were his friends? He never took a day off that I can remember. No? The only pleasure he got out of life, besides serving the kids, was reading. He always had three or four books from the library down the street. I have a hunch Mr. Norton isn't going to be too difficult to find. Why do you say that? Well, from what you've told me, he's a man of about 60. No outside interests. Only things he likes are reading and children. That kind of a man doesn't usually run very far. No, oh, uh, pardon me. Pardon me. All right, boys, you can rest a while. Sorry, Mr. Taylor, please go on. I was about to say, I think he probably is still here in the neighborhood. Taylor! Mr. Taylor! Oh, hello, Eddie. Excuse me. Uh, what is it, Eddie? I've been working on the case. Good for you. What did you find? I spoke to a boy who saw Pop just before he left. That's fine. What did he say? He told me that he was playing with Pop yesterday when two ladies came into the gym. Two ladies? Yeah. Pop saw them and he went and hid in the closet until they went away. Well, when was this, Eddie? Just before milk. Just before milk? Uh, that's at four o'clock. They all get milk and cookies. Oh, I see. Thank you, Eddie. You've been a big help. You're welcome, Mr. Taylor. No, no, stay here a minute, Eddie. I've got another job for you. Gee, thanks. Mr. Williams, uh, do you know the two women who came here yesterday? Well, one of them was a Mrs. Chester. She's on the board of governors. Mm -hmm. She brought a wealthy friend of hers to try to interest her in contributing to the house. I see. Do you know this friend's name? No, I don't, but I can find it out from Mrs. Chester. I'd appreciate you doing that. Eddie, you all ready for your assignment? Yes, sir, anything. All right, I want you to go down to the library, down the street, and see if Mr. Norton is there. Yes, sir. And if sir. he's not there, you wait around for him. I think he might come in for some new books. Sheridan. Yeah? Can I see you a minute? Oh, certainly, Jim. Come on in. I thought you'd be on your way home by now. <laughs> so did I. Oh, what happened? Well, when I left your office this morning, a young boy stopped me in the hall and asked for some help. Uh -huh. What kind of help? He belongs to the Murray Street Settlement House. It seems their Santa Claus has disappeared. <laughs> he wanted us to find him. I went back with him and talked to the head of the house. Well, what's the story? Well, this Mr. Norton has worked at the Settlement House for about 30 years, and then yesterday he suddenly quit. Why? Well, nobody seems to know, except that he saw two women come in, hid in a closet until they left, and he packed up his belongings and disappeared. I see. I, uh... I know this isn't our case, sir, but I'd like to ask a favor. What is it? Well, we have no picture of this man, sir, and I'd like to have an artist go over to the settlement house, talk to the kids, and make up a composite picture of Mr. Norton. What do you want that for? Well, I have a hunch Mr. Norton is still in the neighborhood. I'd like to circulate the picture and see if we can't get him back to the settlement house in time to be Santa Claus again this year. Well, what about your trip home, Jim? Oh, I can wait a day. I don't mind. All right, go ahead. We'll find an artist, and more than that, you can use any facilities we've got. Well, thanks very much, sir. Jordan speaking. Is Mr. Taylor there? Yes, just a moment. It's for you, Jim. Oh, thank you, sir. 
Hello. Hello, Mr. Taylor. Oh, hello, Mr. Williams. I've got that information for you. Fine. The woman with Mrs. Chester yesterday was a Mrs. Norman Montgomery. She lives at 310 North Jackson Avenue. Mrs. Norman Montgomery, 310 North Jackson. Thank you very much, Mr. Williams. Uh, she must have been the one Pop was afraid of. Well, why do you say that? Well, Mrs. Chester's been on friendly terms with Pop for 15 years. Oh, I see. Well, I'm sending an artist over, Mr. Williams. I'd appreciate you letting him talk to all of the children so that he can make up a composite picture, Mr. Norton, for us. We'll do anything we can to help, Mr. Taylor. Fine. He should be there in about, oh, half an hour. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, Eddie wants to talk to all you. Right. Here he is. Hello, Mr. Taylor. Hello, Eddie. What did you find out? Nothing. You go back there, Eddie, and keep watching. Don't give up so easily. All right, Mr. Taylor. I'll go back right now. Attaboy. And, Eddie, you can tell all of your friends up there that if it's at all possible for the FBI to find Santa Claus, we'll have him there tomorrow night for that party. Just, just a moment, please. Mrs. Montgomery? Yes. My name is Taylor. I'm from the FBI. Here are my credentials, ma'am. What can I do for you, Mr. Taylor? I'd like to come in and talk to you, if you don't mind. Come in. Thank you. What is it you want? I'm checking up on something, and I'd like to ask you a few questions. What sort of questions? Well, the first one would be, were you at the Murray Street Settlement House yesterday? Why, yes, I was with a Mrs. Chester. What does that to do with you? Oh, it has nothing to do with me, Mrs. Montgomery, but it might have something to do with a man who disappeared. What are you talking about? Well, this man who disappeared seemed to be afraid of being seen by you, according to what I can gather. What? Well, that's merely a theory, Mrs. Montgomery. Why would he be afraid of me? Well, that's what we don't know. Who is this man? Well, I have a composite picture made by one of the artists in our office. Here you are. Oh. Well, do you recognize him? Yes, I do. I haven't seen or talked with him in 30 years, but I know him. Who is he? He's my brother, Kenneth. Why would your own brother try to avoid you? He had a good reason. What's that, Mrs. Montgomery? Kenneth is a common thief. <laughs> Turn in just a moment to tonight's unofficial case from the files of your FBI. Now a quick interview with a man who looks as if he had just won several thousand dollars on a quiz show. A man who got rid of a ten-year worry in just ten minutes. Well, that's exactly what happened. In walks my equitable society representative with that fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. And ten minutes later, goodbye, old man worry. Well, that's swell, Jim. Now, suppose you tell us just what the Equitable Society's fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers did for you. Well, Mr. Keating, before I got this Equitable chart, the biggest worry in my life was wondering what would happen to my family if I should die unexpectedly. But here's the funny thing. I, I never had the nerve to figure it out until I got this chart. That's it, Jim. This Equitable Society chart is an eye-opener and a worry chaser. Not one man in 50 really knows how much money his family would need to carry on without him what they would require to maintain a decent standard of living until the children finish high school. The equitable fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers gives you a reliable basis on which to figure up the minimum expense. What's more, it's simplicity itself. Every step is made absolutely clear by easy-to-understand pictures. And my wife and I really got interested. And when we were finished, we knew what our target was. My only regret is that I didn't get a chart years ago. It would have saved me a lot of unnecessary worry. Jim, how much did this fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers cost you? Why, not one cent. It was free. Yes, this chart is just one of many services available from the Equitable Life Assurance Society. It does not obligate you in any way. Drop a hint to any representative of the Equitable Society, and he'll be glad to see that you get a copy. Or send a postcard, care of this ABC station, to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. <laughs> Now, 
And now back to the FBI file, The Return of St. Nick. Hate is a vicious emotion which feeds upon itself and becomes greater as time goes on. It utterly destroys every person it possesses because it ruins their judgment by robbing them of their ability to see both sides of any question. Ultimately, it must warp the mind to such a degree that only a paramount shock can restore any degree of mental balance. As you can see from tonight's case from the files of your FBI, hate can make two members of the same family stop talking for 30 years for a period of time that is almost half the allotted time of man on earth. That kind of hatred can consume a person, an industry, or a nation. For when a nation hates that way, the lone possible outlet is war. No one person can prevent a war between nations. But every one of you can make this a much merrier holiday season for yourself by resolving to live your life with full dignity as a human being and full respect for the rights of every other human being on the face of the earth. Tonight's file continues in the apartment of Mrs. Montgomery. Mr. Taylor, I assume that your business with me is concluded. Yes, I'm afraid it is, Mrs. Montgomery, and I'm sorry, because you're the one person I hope could help us find your brother. What do you want to find him for? To arrest him? No, no. No, Until his disappearance, he worked at the Murray Street Settlement House. Children there love him. It's very important to them that he be found so he can play Santa Claus at their Christmas party. I haven't seen him for 30 years. I've no idea where he might be, and frankly, I don't care. Mrs. Montgomery, why do you believe your brother is a thief? Well, I might as well tell you. If you'll promise to keep it confidential, I naturally want no publicity. Oh, I assure you, your story will not be publicized. Very well. More than 30 years ago, shortly after my father's death, Kenneth forged my name to a check for $10,000. How did you find out that he did it? It was perfectly obvious. He was an irresponsible young man, and shortly after the forgery, he suddenly had a lot of money. Anyone ask him where he got it? Oh, yes. He said he made it as a result of an investment. Of course, that was a lie. Did uh, did you discover the forgery yourself, Mrs. Montgomery? No, I didn't. But Mr. Bryant, who was the executor of my father's estate, and an old friend of the family, found out about it, and he came and told me. Mm. You never prosecuted the matter? No, Mr. Bryant convinced me that I shouldn't risk ruining our family name. Mrs. Montgomery, did it ever occur to you that your brother might have been telling you the truth? He couldn't have. Well, if you don't mind my saying so, I think that anyone who has his record with children deserves more of a break than that. Tell me, do you by any chance still have that forged check? Yes, I have it. And would you have any samples of your brother's handwriting of that period? Yes, I kept all of the papers in the case in a special file. Do you have that file handy? Yes. I wonder if I might borrow it. For what purpose? I'd like to see if a hunch I have about your brother's innocence is correct. Oh, hello, Eddie. Here, have a chair. Thanks. Eddie, Eddie, what are you doing wearing a mustache? I bought a disguise kit, Mr. Taylor, so I could stay at the library and watch out for Mr. Norton without him recognizing me. Oh, that's a good idea. Did you see Mr. Norton? Yes, I did. You did when? Well, he didn't show up at all last night. I stayed until the library closed. But you told me to stay on it, so I went back this morning. And he came to the library about 10 o'clock. Did you talk to him? I tried to talk to him, but he said he didn't know me. He did? Yeah. So I took off the red wig I was wearing, but he still said he didn't know me. I didn't think he'd do that. Then he turned around and walked out of the library. I trailed him, just like I saw a detective do in the movies. Where'd he go? I wrote down the address, Mr. Taylor. Uh, Here it is. 71 Vernon Avenue. 71 Vernon. That's not far from the settlement house, is it? No, it's only about two blocks. Oh, good work, partner. Here's that report from handwriting, Jim. Oh, thanks very much, Carl. What's that, Mr. Taylor? Why, 
I had some papers analyzed by our handwriting experts, Eddie. Are you going to see Pop now? Uh, in a little while, Eddie. First, I've got another call to make. Now, you go back over to the settlement house. I'll see you there later on. Good morning, Mrs. Montgomery. Good morning. May I come in? Julia. Thank you. Oh, I have some news about your brother. What kind of news? I took your file of papers down to the handwriting analysis department at our office. Why did you do that? Because I wanted them to study the signature on that forged check and then compare it with samples of your brother's handwriting. I don't understand why you had them do all that work. Well, Mrs. Montgomery, when this crime was committed, modern scientific handwriting analysis was not used in cases of this kind. So? So today it is possible for experts to examine handwriting and to make a sound judgment based on this study. Those experts have just written a report stating that your brother did not forge that check. I can't believe it. Nevertheless, it's true. It isn't very polite to speak ill of the dead, but according to our studies, the executor of the estate, Mr. Bryant, is the one who forged that check. Mr. Bryant? That's right. I don't know what to say. Well, I, I think that whatever you do have to say ought to be said to your brother. Yes. He disappeared. He was found this afternoon in a rooming house on Vernon Avenue. Oh. Mr. Taylor, I'm not a young woman anymore. No. All I have left is my pride. Would you ask Kenneth to come to see me tonight? Well, I'm sorry, Mrs. Montgomery, but I think your brother has some pride himself. After all, he ran away when he was innocent. No, no, I'd suggest that if you want to see him, you meet us. Wait. If everything goes well, we'll be at the settlement house at 8 o'clock tonight. Who's there? Mr. Norton? That's right. I'd like to talk to you, sir. Come in. Thank you. Mr. Norton, I'm from the FBI. Here are my credentials. What do you want here? I came up to ask you to come back to the settlement house. I'm sorry, but I don't think that's any of your business. Well, you're quite right, sir, it isn't. But may I ask you a question? What is it? Why did you leave? Uh, I uh, got tired of listening to all those kids yelling and screaming in my ear. Uh, I find that difficult to believe, sir. That anyone who spent 30 years with children as you have would suddenly get to dislike them that much. Mm, well, maybe that's not the reason. Maybe I've got reasons of my own that I don't want to talk about. Could it possibly be because of your sister? Who told you that? I, I'm sorry if I seem to have pried into your affairs, Mr. Norton. But I've been to see your sister... What for? I went there because I was trying to find you. She told me about that check for $10,000. She did? Yes. And with the aid of the FBI laboratory, we showed your sister that you didn't forge her name. What? Mr. Bryant was the guilty one. What did you say? I said Mr. Bryant was the one who forged that check. How do you know that? Handwriting analysis proved it. You told this to my sister? Yes. Did she believe you? Yes, yes, she did. She'd like to see you. Try to make amends. I asked her to come to the settlement house tonight. I don't want to see her. Oh, now, Mr. Norton, it's Christmas Eve. This is no time to feel that way. If she's coming to the settlement house, I won't go back there. Look, Mr. Norton, you're not going to let all of those kids down. Now, come on, put on your coat. If we hurry, we can get there for the beginning of the party. Started the snow just in time. The kids will be happy. It makes it seem more like Christmas when it snows. Yeah, sure does. Well, here we are. Go ahead, Mr. Norton. Thank you. 
I'm a little late. I suppose the party has already started. Yeah. I'd better hurry upstairs and get into my Santa Claus suit. Oh, it's in Mr. Williams' office. He told me to bring you right in. Oh, right. You go ahead in, sir. I'll wait for you out here. Thank you. Hello? Can you... Grace? Mr. Taylor was kind enough to invite me to the party. I know. You haven't changed much, can you? Grace. <laughs> there, there now. All oh, these years I've falsely accused you. Let's forget it, Grace. It's all in the past. Can you ever forgive me? I already have. <laughs> Look, this is no time for crying, Grace. Here's a hanky. Dry your eyes. Thank you. Now help me on with this costume, will you? Well, that's the Santa Claus. Yep. This is my annual job around here. How wonderful. I got to really hurry, too. Party's already started. Will you hand me that wig and beard? Why, surely. Here you are. Boys are starting to sing. Yes. I better be getting out there. Well, will you join me at the party, Grace? Of course. The boys are waiting for you, Mr. Thank you. Merry Christmas, sir. Merry Christmas, Mr. Taylor. Soon we will all begin a new year. A year that can bring us happiness, prosperity, and a rich, full life. But those goals cannot be attained without work without hard work and long concentration. There are a few bits of advice that are applicable to everyone, but there can be no doubt that for each of us, life will be richer and fuller if we follow one set rule. If we live every day during the coming year with the love and kindness in our hearts that we have on Christmas Eve. For in that way lies peace on earth, goodwill towards man. Equitable Society representative. On behalf of more than 8,000 Equitable Society representatives from coast to coast, I wish all members of this radio audience a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. After the holiday, your local Equitable Man will be glad to bring you a copy of the fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers, or serve you in any other way. Make a note to phone one of us early next week. Or send a postcard care of this radio station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. <laughs> The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. Others in the cast were Sonny Barnett, Herb Butterfield, Peggy Weber, Roland Winters, and Carlton Young. This is your FBI as a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating wishing you a merry, merry Christmas from the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at the same time to This is your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.